Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott, and with me again is Dan. And on this week's show, we have Olympic qualifier Jacob Peters joining us. How are you doing, Jacob? Welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, not too Great. bad. How are you? Um, we're good. We're good. It's been a busy few weeks since trials. I'm sure you're very much the same. Um, and I guess the first thing to say is a massive congratulations on qualifying for your first Olympic Games. You must be feeling ecstatic. Yeah, I'm over the moon. I, I still don't think it's quite sunk in yet, but, um, but yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing feeling. Straight back into hard training and kind of no time to even think about it, is it? Uh, we had a, had a little bit of a break last week just to kind of reset ourselves, ready for training into, um, into obviously Tokyo. But, um, but yeah, back into, back into hard training this week. Had a little bit of a build, but by the end of the week, yeah, we were pretty much back, back into normal training. Mm. Awesome. What were your expectations going into the meet? Because of course you knew the, the consideration time of uh, what was it, fifty one, wasn't it? Fifty one nine for the hundred flies. Yeah, like yeah, something like that. Um, so what was that, was that the time you were targeting? Yeah, definitely. I was definitely aiming for at least that time. Um, my previous mm. PB was a fifty two one. Mm. Uh, I did that in Edinburgh. So the last, pretty much the last competition before everything went into lockdown. Mm. Um, and I was really, I was really pleased with that time back then as well because that was. I wasn't tapered, but I had a, like a recovery week because that's just how it kind of fell into my into my cycle. But um, but yeah, I was really happy with that time that I did last year, and I was I felt good for obviously trials last year, but um, obviously that I never got to kind of prove myself there. Mm. So I'm really happy that I managed to kind of do it this this season. And to be honest, I feel like I've got a really big, a really good block of training behind me now, mm-hmm. um, and I did feel really good coming into champs, and. To be honest, I feel like I feel like I've still got more in the bag. I think uh, on the live stream, he, the guy mentioned that I wasn't uh, I wasn't that I wasn't smiling. Like when I did, <laughs> obviously inside, I was really happy, but I kind of I kind of know that I've I've definitely got more in my, in me. So I'm really excited to Tokyo and to show everyone what I can do. I mean, you you say you got more in the tank. That was a PB by what point five something like that. Yeah. That's that's still a big drop given senior level you don't really see that that often um when you go into a meet like that and you see that a lot of the british swimming consideration times they're tough they're they were really hard for a lot of these events now you've hit that how much confidence does that give you going on to the big event to the olympics because now you're not kind of the also run your time that you've hit puts you right up there yeah um i feel like over the last few years that's kind of been something that I've struggled with. I've kind of always put all these other guys on a pedal stool mm. and like I've looked up to them in a way. So I think over the last few years, that's something that I've like not suffered with, but mentally I needed to get over and challenge. Try and um, see yourself on their level kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Obviously I still respect them. I still mm. I see what they've done. I think they're amazing swimmers. I've kind of got to now challenge them and say, look, I'm that good. I could be that good as well. Mm. And I kind of, instead of looking up to them, I've kind of got to see them on the same level as me and, you know, really work to try and get up there with them. Did it help to have Jimmy Guy racing against you? Did it help you to like drag on to get that time of 51-6? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, obviously, I, I knew, I've known Jim for quite a while now. Um, I, I, over the last few years, like the last year when I've been at Bath, I've mm. really got to know him a bit better and like, I think mm. we've become quite close. And he's been really supportive of me in training and at, and at trials. Um, but yeah, definitely definitely helped having him there with me. I also kind of know how he races. Mm. I knew he was going to go out quick. So I think having, having him there and knowing he was going to do that, like that kind of helped me with my own race plan. I, didn't, I knew he was going to do that so it didn't put me off. So I knew what I had to do to get the time that I needed to do. So, yeah. yeah, I think I think me and Dan almost, we consider Jimmy Guy as the ultimate racer in Britain. Whatever race he does, if it's heats, finals, he knows what he needs to do. 
So it's kind of, it's a great, yeah, he's competitive no matter what event he does, but if he needs to hit a certain time to make a final, he's not going to completely blow the doors off as long as he hits that time. So it's good to know that you can, you almost have that guy next to you. He's experienced enough to know that he's going to go certain time to get under the qualifying time. As long as you stick on his shoulder, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's really encouraging, especially at that turn when, when you're with him and level and you're just like, okay, good, good pace. Let's, let's kick on. Yeah. I remember actually at 25, cause I had, I had quite a good start. Mm. I remember 25 and I couldn't see him. I was thinking, I've got, I've gone out way too quick. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, I just I had a really good start. So that, I think that worked in my favour as well. So I, I see you more as a sort of a 50 metre swimmer mm. as well, because I kind of expected you to be sort of touching the wall level with Jimmy. And then maybe because he's more of a 200 fly swimmer, he brings it back towards the end. But yeah, I noticed you said that actually, but I, it's actually the other way around. I, was, I used to be a 200 fly swimmer. Okay, I think it's from the meets <laughs> in Manchester. The, your 50 yeah. flies at Manchester have kind of the PBs have been yeah, dropping. They and they've been looking really good. Is that yeah. something you were working on over the Manchester meets? You were like looking at your first 50 for, say, this target in the 100 meters butterfly? Um, well, I've never, never focused on the 50 really at all. It's kind of been something that I've, I've done just because well, I, I can do it. But, yeah. um, as a junior swimmer, I, I was a 200 fly swimmer. And I think just as I kind of transitioned into like uh, open, like senior level swimming, mm. and I, was, I got bigger and I got stronger, I then kind of struggled with the 200 a bit. But I mean, my PB from 2017, so when I was just turned 17, is a 151, 157.1, mm. 200. But I bet then the following season, I kind of struggled to to get to that I, I went and did it at commies and I went 157A and then I kind of went 158 and then I kind of went two minutes and it kind of just went like that so I I kind of then with obviously the Olympics coming in I thought I've got a better chance in the 100 mm. I'm going to focus on the 100 for the time being and really try and get on that team because I'm not ruling out the 200 in the future but a 155 for me was pretty unreasonable whereas mm. 51 9 was very much on the cards mm. so i think that's that's where my head was going into olympics so um i don't know what i'm going to do next year that's a conversation i'm going to have to have with joel whether i then transition where well, i now stay with sprint and maybe add a few more strokes in or whether that's i can find all that uh 200, 200 i mean I'd, i'd much rather be a 100 flyer than a 200 flyer <laughs> I mean, that, that yeah. training, the, yeah. the training behind the scenes must be awfully hard. Yeah, it was. Much rather 100. Yeah. <laughs> Is there, it's not regret. Is there any part of you that wishes there were more, of the, that the 50 was part of the Olympic program? I know um, it's kind of out of your control slightly, yeah, but yeah, it would be good because it's, it's not a massive event to fit into the schedule it would be nice to see kind of the 50 fly because that'd be really fun or the 50 breaststroke to see PT just get the, the kind of stars of swimming in the water a little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I think it would be, it would be great. I mean, cause it's kind of like you're kind of ruling out a whole bunch of events yeah. that some like people, cause people still train them. because they're still in the Europeans and worlds. And worlds stuff. So it's, yeah. not like mm. it's an event that nobody trains. So I know I know Ben does fifty fly as well. I know he's more of a fifty freestyler. But I, I was speaking to Ben Proud, but he actually well, this was quite a while ago. He might might have changed now, but he said he actually prefers the, doing the fifty fly over the fifty three. Okay, he, he does the fifty three because there isn't the Olympics. Like, mm. Yeah, that's mm. he sees that as his job kind of thing. Mm. That's what he said to me. But um, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to do the I'd love the fifties to be in there. Partly, I mean, mm. I'm biased because I'm a sprinter, so I would. Uh, yeah. obviously that kind of opens more doors for me but um i just think it gets more in like the, the top swimmers in the world the caleb dressels the adam Peaties, the sarah Sochrams, they're all they're all 100 meters and 50 meter swimmers so surely by getting them in the water more then exposes them to the wider audience if that makes sense and of course our biggest complaint about trials was that it wasn't on a mainstream tv channel so what are, what are your thoughts about that uh well see it's um yeah, I'd, I'd love it to be on mainstream TV 
because it one mm. it makes it more accessible to my friends and family who want to watch me obviously youtube is a fairly big platform now so it's it's still easy to watch if for the people who want to watch it mm. but um it also kind of makes it less likely that people are going to stumble across it so yeah. people who aren't yeah. necessarily in the swimming world or the community they're less likely to come across it on youtube purely because the sheer amount of content that is on youtube mm, yeah they're less likely to come across it and then be introduced into the into the swimming world whereas on, if it was on if it was on a mainstream channel it, it's they're far more likely to be scrolling through the tv channels and see british trials british olympic mm. trials and go oh what's that and click it and you know yeah. be a bit more interested in it but um again it's out of my control and as an athlete who's actually swimming I don't think about it that much because I'm okay. there to do my job and kind of get what I have to do done but I mean as a as a for the, for the sport it would definitely be better if it was on a mainstream channel mm. I think that was kind of very much our view from trials that the diehard people who love British swimming or just swimming in general they'll find it it's more the kids who are sat at home with their parents in the evening. They're not going to be inspired by it because they're not the ones searching for it. So if we go to kind of your training leading up to the trials, I know for some swimmers at Bath, there was a bit of disruption. I think Tom Dean was in and out of the water quite a bit. Did you have quite a, a good lead up to trials or was it yeah. a bit affected by COVID as well? Um. No, to be honest, my, my training in the lead up was, uh, was pretty good. Um, mm. probably the most consistent training I've had in a while due to, due to all the precautions that have had to be taken that, I mean, I wasn't going out much, so I was rarely getting mm. ill. Like, I, I mean, I don't get ill often anyway, mm. but I, I didn't, I maybe got, I had a stuffy nose once maybe through the whole of winter, which not bad yeah. for a swimmer. Yeah, it's pretty good. nothing really. <laughs> so um, I've actually had a pretty consistent block of training, which is obviously paid off in the water. So I'm happy about that. But um, and obviously moving to Bath in mm. June for the return to training program. Yeah. Um, I was going to move anyway. I was going to go there in September when if um, COVID hadn't have happened like after um, after the season. So it wasn't a big massive change for me because I I planned it anyway. And I had actually been going there because I originally from Poole, it's about an hour and a half away. So yeah. I'd originally been training at Bath every Wednesday just to mm. kind of like get some like a transition training. period kind of time or transition period. And which I think was very helpful because I did need to train with older and um, athletes and with better facilities. But I think from a maturity point of view, I wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. I think just having those few extra years where I was still at home kind of helped me but then because if I'd gone too early I feel like I'd have just like lost my way a bit mm. so I did have a few extra years at home but then I think coming to Bath last year was just just at the right moment where I was mature enough to manage to keep my head and focus on what was necessary and yeah. get it done right so um I think, uh, but yeah, definitely in a consistent block. Kind of went off the question there, but. <laughs> That's all right. And, <laughs> and you're now very much in one of the most successful houses in kind of British swimming, aren't you? Because there's all, all three of you who live there have qualified for the Olympic Games. Yeah, definitely. Um, we are absolutely buzzing about that. Um, I can say the house must be bouncing. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend was very sweet and she made us a cake. <laughs> the Olympic rings on it. And then it's like <laughs> three little people. Um, underneath <laughs> so yeah so that was very very sweet of her but um, absolutely buzzing but I mean was Joel Joel's group is very clearly mm, doing well doing well even the lads who weren't um, didn't quite make the team still dropping PBs so mm. I think Joel sent some, said something to us we had a meeting after over the whole squad in all of our events we dropped 52 second PBs like a total of 52 seconds in the PBs so oh, um, right. God. Yeah, we've definitely got a good group, group, good group of lads that are mm. a good mixture of hard working and you know knows how to have a bit of fun as well. So, so was there any um, was there any pressure to hit the consideration time in your household because you were the last one? So of course, Kieran was <laughs> first, then Brody. So was there a little bit of banter and going backwards and forth? Well, it was um, 
Yes and no. Because obviously I I watched Kieran and that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, that was awesome. I was literally yeah. running around my bedroom. I was like, <laughs> I was absolutely buzzing for him. And I watched, um, obviously I watched Brody. Brody's 4am was the day before mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friday night, I think Brody's 4am. So I watched that and I was like, go on. And I was like cheering for him as well. And I was like, hang on a minute. I'm the, I, I, I'm, smart, I'm the only one who hasn't got the time in the house but I mean it, there was like kind of a brief kind of bit of pressure but you kind of just forget about it because I was there to, like when I turn up at the pool I'm very much I've got my race plan I've got my timeline mm. I just kind of I know what I'm doing at like and I'm glad to have had those Manchester meets because um the first one I was believe it or not I was really nervous the first Manchester meet because I've had race in about a year. Yeah, I was yeah. like, but having those two uh, meets there to really kind of hone in on my timeline and my, um, my race plan um, obviously helped me a lot for trials. But so that kind of having that focus point on the race day kind of took away. Uh, so the pressure wasn't really in my head. Mm. Yeah. I would have thought it's kind of less pressure and more excitement because you you're on the same sort of training program as these guys you're under the same coach you live in the same house you're and then you you see these guys have hit these amazing times both of them dropped some massive pbs and then you're next in the water it it must have filled you with some confidence yeah definitely because um even even the people who weren't in the house like matt and jarvis did 100 before that as well um and cam and john had all been hitting pbs and luke as well so i think um having that confidence that obviously the program is working, has worked clearly. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, as I said, like we're a great group, like you can't really fault us at all as a, as a group. Um, we all get, we all got, and we all get on like very well and obviously training hard, push each other to the limit every day. So yeah, having that confidence, everyone else doing well. Yeah. That did help on, on the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from I think from speaking to Matt beforehand in a previous podcast of ours, it's very much kind of work hard and play hard kind of attitude. Yeah. He's 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 great fun outside of the pool, but then when it comes to his swimming, he's really really focused and serious. It it kind of sounds like that's that's kind of the squad dynamic going on there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think um, that is that is very much the case. Work hard, play hard within limits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, no, yeah. I mean, we all get on. We're like a fa- little mini family. I think there's, mm. yeah, we all. There's no one who kind of gets left out at all. So, other than Kieran and Brody, and of course yourself, who are your other standout swims from trials? From the squad or from just, from, in, general? just in general? Just in general. I don't know. Um, I mean, Kathleen, Kathleen Dawson's backstroke mm. as well was that was impressive, that, wasn't it? Yeah, very, and as well as Cassie's. Yeah. Um, Obviously, PT obviously always does amazing. I don't know if that's a standout because we kind of expect that from him now. But um, it's weird to think that. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. honestly is. If he's going that fast and just like, oh yeah, whatever. It's normal. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, Jim's two hundred fly. Yeah, that was so brave. I don't know how he did yeah. it like that. I, th- I, what did I, he t- I watched it. I, wa- yeah. I was watching it and I saw his, I turned it a twenty four five, and they turned it a fifty three zero, and I was like, yes, yeah, mental. Gone for that. <laughs> and it was only top of 122 something maybe and just watching that i even even with the last 10 meters he still mm. managed to go a fast time yeah so i think that, i don't i don't think he's racing it in tokyo is he i i, I don't know so yeah i haven't got a clue um yeah well he will he'll be doing the relays definitely the 100 yeah, relays yeah. probably well uh, is there yeah. a chance that you might have put your hand up for a leg in that relay, even if it's in the heats, because you're not far off his time. And that yeah. medley team should be qualifying for the final. Well, well let's hope so. I feel like, mm. I mean, I've definitely got, I feel like I've got more in the tank. Um, obviously, I'm just going to have to prove that I'm reliable over Europeans and Glasgow. Yeah. And just see how those go. But, um, but hopefully they... they'll get a relay swim at Europeans, because then... I was going to say, yeah. I'll be trialling different kind of, uh, different mixes of swimmers just to kind of see how combat- compatible we are because at the end of the day mm. it's not really obviously it is how fast you can swim but it's also mm. about the chemistry you have as a team um but i also i do think i get on i mean i've i've uh, trained with pe and um 
and will be in green bank and mm. don't bring all like uh, commies and Europeans and stuff. So I do know them all, but, um, obviously Duncan does a hundred fly every now and then. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah. So I think, I think I definitely put my name in the hat, but, and I've got more to come, but I think they'll probably, they'll probably hold the team selection until Olympics. So, mm. um, I have to get a good individual off, off the bat and then to really put my name in serious contention. Do you have a target time in mind? Um, well, I think so I th- this is kind of where I, my head's at. I think it's going to be a 51 low to make the final. Mm. So I'd like, I'd like to get, I reckon I'd like to get a 51-1, 51-2 under my belt in the semis. And if I can get that in the semis, then I, I want to try and go sub 51 in the final if I can. It's got to yeah. find another half second or so. Yeah, and I think I've, I've definitely got more in the bag. I think because mm. I touched the wall and obviously I, I looked at the time and I was I was very happy, but I wasn't like I, I feel like I had more. I mean, I came back like, a lot in the last yeah. twenty five yeah, or so, yeah. and that was kind of how I, I my race plan went. My first my race plan was first fifty, like easy speed, just try and use use gym to my advantage and just try and uh, my aim was like a 24 low. So I went, I went 24 two. Um, and then kind of build off the wall for that for, to 75. Um, and then, so it was my, it was kind of like 75 meters body and then body and brain for the first 20, 70, 20, uh, 75 meters. And mm. then the last 25 meters just swim with my heart. Mm. And I feel like I managed to do that at trials and I think I can push myself even more at the Olympics. So I feel, you know, there is definitely more in the tank. So I think, and even Joel said that when I got out afterwards, he said there's more in that. <laughs> so, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It's good to know though. Good to know that there's, there's more to come. Is that kind of tactic for that, for a hundred butterfly is very much what we're seeing from a lot of the Joel Fink swimmers, bring it yeah. back strong for the last back end. And I know he's, he's an Aussie, isn't he? Yeah. So is it that's very much the Aussie style. Is it I don't know, it's kind of standing out against the rest of the British field, all of his swimmers, the way that they bring it home. Is there a yeah. lot of focus on it in training? Um there is. Well we do we do obviously as a sprinter, I still do quite I still do my threshold sets and all all that kind of stuff. And that's very much a staple of the um our program. Mm. And maybe something that I was missing in my old program. Uh, in my old program, we did do threshold sets, but because obviously it was more targeted towards a, um, a club program, mm. they weren't quite at the same level as Joel's are. Mm. And I did a lot of like race pacey type fly back at pool more so than I do at Bath. I still do my race pace fly, but it's probably more tailored to quality rather than quantity. So um, I think, and yeah, Joel's squad, although it's seen that we're all coming back strong, we, during the kind of build phase into trials, we kind of split off into doing various different pieces. Like, because obviously I'm not going to train the same as Kieran is and his 403. So he kind of, he, he writes three different sessions really during that last three weeks for outflow. So there's something for specific for each of us to do that is going to help us come into our race at trials. So, um, but very much before that, it was, we kind of did stuff as a squad. So I think maybe in that phase, we kind of, that's where we kind of built our back end kind of strength in that phase before we moved on to our race specific kind of training. Mm. do you all do drills together do you have your own specific drills or is it all just a plain sort of regular drills for everyone um well see when i do drills i i literally only do fly drills because Mm. that's what's specific to me and as the only kind of well other than Brody, who will do a bit of fly because of his im i'm the only one who kind of does fly drills Mm. so in that in that way it's they are kind of um specific to me because and i kind of i have actually taken quite a lot of my drills from my club program 
So I haven't changed it up. I've obviously thrown more drills on top of that, but I've kind of still kept my like my few favourite drills from my club program because they did do obviously they they did well for me back then. So I kind of kept them in, and then added some more on top of that. But I think drills are very much specific to the because um, obviously someone like Matt has a very different freestyle to someone like Kieran. So. Mm. I mean, I only ask that because your butterfly technique is actually, I really like it. It's quite, it's very like a long and smooth stroke and it, it looks like you're more suited to a 200. Now, now you've said it actually kind of like clicks and like, oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe you're right. Um, no, that, that was all I was asking. So is there any specific drills that you do, for example? Um, I do Beyond D is probably my favorite one, but I, mm. I think I do it quite different to how other people do it. Okay. Especially when I watch like someone like Brody do it, like, I think the the standard way that you do it is you're meant to throw your arms up and kind of like dive kind of down, aren't you? I think I like think that's, that's the really the standard way, but the wrong way according yeah, to. Yeah, okay. but I, yeah, I, I do very much put. I do the pushback, and my hands don't go any further than my hips, mm-hmm. and I take a low breath, and I put my head down as fast as like, as fast as possible, and I glide very much like on top of the water. Yeah. So it's it's like I call it flat beyond the because I try not to I like try and keep as flat as possible on, on top of the water. So I think that's that's the main drill that I do, and that's mm. like I feel like that's how that's how I develop my technique over time. Well, Scott will be happy about that because that's the exact way I do beyond Dean. We've got it on our YouTube channel, haven't we? So <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> that's exactly how we're teaching others to do it. Um. So if you have any advice to young butterfly swimmers who might be listening to this podcast, what advice would you give them? It's quite a broad question, but if there's any, any, any pieces of advice that you might have. Um, I think listen to your coach, trust the process and always believe in yourself because I think if you, as long as you believe Mm. you can do it, you can like, you can do it. I think so. I, I went through a tough, the toughest probably point in my career as a swimmer was probably 2019 when I didn't quite make worlds. Uh, I went a 52-4. I didn't quite make the team. And I was obviously gutted. But at the same time, like I kept going. So yeah. I feel like if, as long as you believe you, that you will make it, like, you know, you've given yourself a chance. And that's all you need, really. If you've got, as long mm. as you've got the chance, you just got to make the most of it. We said that so about Alice Thomas, didn't we? Because it was her well, first Olympics, and that's just a fantastic role model. I mean, Commonwealth champion in 200 fly, but she's never been to Olympics, which is she's, amazing. She's 30, so uh, I think I'm, I'm sure she uh, adopts that sort of same mentality as you. Yeah, we. I mean, we've got this um, same place with uh, obviously Callum Jarvis. I really wanted him to make it this year and so did the rest of our squad and uh, he's gone and done it. So really happy about that. Definitely. Well, Jacob, it's been really, really fun chatting to you. If you don't mind, we usually finish our podcast with some quick fire questions okay. so okay. so that people can get to know, know you just that tiny bit better. Okay. You feel up for them? Yeah, let's go. So what's your favourite event? Favourite event? Uh, 100 fly. <laughs> Who is your swimming idol? Uh, cliche, but Phelps. What's the proudest moment in swimming that you've ever had? <sighs> well, I think, to be honest, it's going to be controversial because obviously I just made the Olympic team. But I think my <laughs> my proudest moment was when I made Commonwealth Games because it was my first international dive team I'd ever made as a senior. So getting making that uh, Commonwealth Games team, I think, probably just trumps it. But I think that's because that is uh, nostalgic for me. So. I was going to say, mm. we'll ask you after Tokyo and see if, that, <laughs> <laughs> see if that's still the answer. <laughs> um, what's the hardest set you've ever done? Uh, okay, so my coach did back at pool. We did 4200s where I did eight freestyle, two fly, six freestyle, four fly, four freestyle, six fly, two freestyle, eight fly. Uh, that's probably the hardest set I've done. Is that with Barry Aldrich? Yeah, Barry Aldrich, yeah. Yeah, that's a killer what set. What, what were the... T- Say again? I, what made that worse was the fact I was the only one doing a proper session. Everyone else had, like, dives and starts. <laughs> oh, so, what? So I had my own... Because it was in the, the build-up to commies. 
Mm. So I was kind of in that hard training phase. So I, mm. I had that session in my own lane and then people in the lane next to me were doing like dive 15s. <laughs> oh, that that made that session even worse. What were those turnaround times? Um, I, they weren't quick. I think it was 2.40 for the freestyle and three minutes for the fly. Okay. So it was very much just make the times and just kind of mm. go for it. But, you know, 20, 200 fly is not fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine. Yeah, definitely not. Um, and if you were to go on a road trip in the car, three guests, who would you have? They can be friends, family, or celebrities. Ooh. Um, probably my girlfriend, my little brother, because he is a box of laughs. Um, can I take my dog? Yeah, we've had yes. plenty of dogs. Loads of dogs. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> friend, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, Jacob, like I said, it's been amazing chatting to you. A massive good luck for this summer. We, we have our eyes on you and we are hopeful that you can get down to that 51 low. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, honestly, I mean, it's the swims you did at trials were amazing, and it's so exciting that you say you've got more in a tank. I mean, I, th- I thought at the time that you swam with 50, uh, 51 six was just incredible for a 0.5 PB. Um, I can't wait for the next 0.5 PB. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. Thank you so much, Jacob, for joining us. Um, And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, any of your podcast providing platforms, you'll find us there. From me, Scott, thank you very much. From Dan, we'll catch you on the next one. And Jacob, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, pleasure to be here. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.